I think a lot of films are too clever for their own good because they're, they're just twisting and turning the plot in violation of the character and you never want to do that because the moment the audience distances from the character, you've lost them. How do you build a character from scratch? Well, it can come from a lot of places. Uh, I de I, what I do is I keep a list of people that I've known in my life and, and actors that I love, all of whom are very distinctive and have different ways of talking. And every time I write a script, I cast it with people who are very distinctive in my mind. In some cases, it's actors I'm gonna um, be working with. So for Doug Jones and Bob Picardo and Mira Furlan um, and Bill Mooney, I wrote those roles for them for Space Command. Um, but in some cases, it might be an actor that I'm not gonna get. Like for instance, I wrote a script called Fugitive Space and the template I used for the lead was Ed Harris in The Abyss because it was a great character and a great voice. And I could see him very clearly in my mind. So I knew that Ed Harris wasn't gonna play that role. He's too old for that role now for one thing, but, but it made the character very real, very alive to me. And um, so you just make sure that nobody is just flat. Nobody's just there for exposition. Um, you never, I don't tend to describe the physicality of a character because often you might have something in mind, but there might be an actor who doesn't look a thing like that who's great and you don't want to limit it. And, um, and I also very much want diversity in my, in my cast, Asian, black, different countries, as more the better, you know? And uh, so that's also part of, the, part of the design. I cast a lot of actors uh, from restaurants I eat at. The waiters are all, the waiters and waitresses are all actors and actresses. And I'll, if I find someone who's good or who intrigues me, I'll say, send me your reel and I'll, I'll cast them. Yeah, I've done that a lot. That's great. I like that. Yeah, and also too, you can see how on they are. You yes. Know, well, there the was one, industry, yeah, there was a, there's a restaurant called Granville in the Valley, and there was a young actor who looked exactly like he could be the son of Ethan McDowell, who plays Jack Kemmer, the lead in Space Command, and he was an actor, and I uh, and I cast him. He's in, he's in uh, the bonus episode, and he's great. He does a great job. So I'm gonna he'll be in more episodes coming up. What mistakes do new writers make in writing characters? The mis new writers make a lot of mistakes in writing characters. Usually the biggest mistake is they're just flat. They all sound alike and they just are saying exactly what they're thinking. In real life, people don't say what they're thinking generally. Um, they might say what they're thinking directly in an argument, but often not, not even then. Um, so you wanna think about how people really talk. And also remember that a script is not a representation of real life. It's like a 120 page haiku. And it's, so it's, it's, an, it's an illusion of reality, but it isn't reality. And so often the lines have to be a lot briefer and a lot punchier. Um, but I always like to have characters who talk differently from each other, who are very different in their outlooks, their worldview. Um, also, a mistake many writers make, not just in the beginning of the career, their careers, but throughout, is that it's about the plot and the characters are just serving the plot. And that's not, not a good idea. You want the plot to be servicing the characters. In other words, for instance, Aliens has a wonderful plot, but Ripley is at the core. She's the heart of that movie. And if that movie were about people you didn't care about, that, and that movie also, by the way, introduces a wide variety of characters incredibly well. So if you look at when they all wake up from the sleep pods and you see you meet all of those characters, they're very different from each other and they have their own take and they're very, you get who they are really quickly and there's a lot of them. And so studying that, just saying, okay, how did that work? And uh, it works like a charm, it's great, it's great. And if you said, so, so because Ripley was not a flat character, no, but if, if some things had been slightly... Well, if, if she were a flat character, you wouldn't care about that movie. It would just, how many movies are based on aliens where, they, where they're like big science fiction movies and because the characters are forgettable, the movie is forgettable. You, you, don't, you, you don't love movies because of the plots generally, you love movies because of the characters. And, uh, you know, and, and I think a lot of films are too clever for their own good because they're, you, they're just twisting and turning the plot in violation of the character and you never want to do that because the moment the audience distances from the character, you've lost them. And, uh, and you know, I don't, I don't like puzzle boxes uh, as, a, as a structure. I like, I mean, you can have mystery, you can have revelations, all of that, that's fine. But I like to have characters who don't, you don't lose the characters because of what the plot is doing. 
you know, and uh, so that's, yeah. And you don't throw them away either. You, you respect your characters. That doesn't mean they can't die, they can, but, uh, but you give what they do meaning. You know, you never just, you know, you never treat anyone as disposable, in, in my opinion. And so with the dialogue, knowing that it's going to be distinct for each character, mm. do you think a lot of new writers start out thinking, okay, I'm going to do sort of an Aaron Sorkin-esque, sort of, you it's, know, very talky, it's witty? A pretty, it's a, well, also, that's another mistake that beginning writers make, which is they're, 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 they're talking, 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 and talking. Like, get in and get out, you know? It's like, make your point, and then on to the next scene. Don't belabor it. You know, so they, they're, they're much too wordy. And also, yeah, imitating Quentin Tarantino, imitating Aaron Sorkin, try not to. You know, uh, I, I mean, uh, you know, Serling said when he started out, he, everything he wrote was bad Hemingway. You know, he said everything began, it was hot. You know, so, <laughs> you know, and, and that's forgivable in young people. But again, you have to find your own voice. You have to find, and the way to find your own voice is, what do I care about? What do I know about? What do I alone know? What, you know, and that it doesn't mean you can't write things that are different from what you've actually lived, but what do you know about and what do you care about and what gets you riled up and what's, where do you live emotionally? And find, and, and, you know, and then when, and, and if you hear someone say something just in the, your, your day, I always carry a little notepad with me and I jot things down. Because if someone says a line that's like, wow, that's great. You know, it's like, I'll, you know, I'll utilize that, you know, and, uh, and try not to rip off dialogue from other movies because God, it's so, so many people rip off lines from aliens. And it's like, oh, please don't. And uh, you know, so that's part of it. Um, and, and, and don't bore, if, if something's boring to you on the page, it'll be boring to everybody. So keep working on it until it works. <laughs> and sometimes a scene doesn't work and the only way to make it work is to get rid of it. And so be willing to do that. Um, it's funny, I was giving notes to someone uh, last week and they were saying, well, does this character work? I read their script and gave them notes. And it was a script that had been in development at big companies. And uh, he said, does this character work? I said, no, lose them, they don't work. And, I, I, and he was saying, well, what about this sequence? I said, no, it doesn't work. And I said, here's what your story is about emotionally. It's about a father and a son, and the son doesn't think his father loved him, but in reality, his father did love him and shielded him and sacrificed his own life, but the son doesn't know that. And ultimately, our, our, the son is willing to do, that, to do that for his own daughter, but the father's spirit saves them. You know, the sp father comes back as a spirit. It's a fantasy film. And, and once I said, this is what your plot is, and everything else is distraction. And so don't keep pulling it in this direction, pulling it in that direction, follow the emotional line. And uh, because that'll work. And so then I just kind of took it, you know, helped it along. And, and again, they don't, do they have to do my version of their film? No, but they have to do a version that works. And, and if that, if my version helps them find their, their path, great. And uh, because many films don't know what they're trying to say, or they have nothing to say. You know, mo, you know what, what are most films about? Most films are about two hours. <laughs> you, know, so, you know, it's like, know what you're trying to say and, and, and then remove the stuff that doesn't say that. What's your favorite piece of dialogue that you overheard personally that you jotted in your little uh, notebook? Yeah, gosh. Um, you know, I, just, uh, I don't remember, and sorry about that. It's like, you know, I, I remember one of my favorite lines that I ever wrote. It's a terrible line, it's terrible. They're in Fugitive Space, which is about um, a future where we trade our worst prisoners with alien prisoners. Uh, they, do, uh, they breathe methane, we breathe oxygen. They're, the prison that's holding the humans is on a methane world, so we can't escape. They can't escape our prison here on Earth because it's oxygen, they don't breathe oxygen. And it's about a um, prison break that erupts at, a, um, at the handoff point, a space station between the two races. And, and the aliens are like eight foot tall jelly, vertical di jellyfish. They communicate via chromatophores, really fun. And, um, and we're gonna be doing that as a TV show. But, the, uh, but I had this guard who was like really sadistic and at the end, he saves one of our characters and he dies. And when he dies, he says, well, I don't know why I did that. And, and the, his boss, the prison, the, the head of the, the guard says, he was a prick, but he had balls. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a stupid line. <laughs> but it's like, oh, that's pretty good. That's funny. Yeah. And, you know, and again, you know, you, but again, it has to be that character who would say that line. You know, and uh, I think he was a dick, but he had balls. Whatever it is, you know, it's, it's, you know. But again, the reason 
that line, I like that line, is because this is a script that has rougher talking characters. You'd never have that line in Space Command, for instance, which is much more a family show. But Fugitive Space has very rough language because it's convicts. And, um, but it's about the industrial military prison complex because ultimately two prisoners, one is a woman helicopter pilot who's been framed for a wartime massacre, and the other is a former cop who um, it c killed his fellow officers because they were going to murder a family. He was a dirty cop, and that was the line he could not cross. But he killed them with premeditation, the, his brother officers, and so he's a trustee now in the prison, but a convict. But they find out that the Earth government has struck a deal with the aliens. The aliens are fighting a war that they're losing, and so Earth has struck a deal with them that they can invade Earth, empty out all the ghettos, and use all the poor people to fight in their war basically as slave soldiers. Mm -hmm. And so our heroes have to get back to Earth and warn everybody and, and, and build a counterinsurgency. So, so it's about something meaningful to me, uh, which is the, the people, the underclass, the people who anything can be done to them because they don't quote unquote count. And I write about that thematically a lot. The people, the people need to be given respect. People need to be seen as human and as, as equal to us in every way. And um, so, so it's going to be a very interesting show, but um, but I created the characters who speak a certain way so that line works in that in that context. But the hero doesn't say that. I just have this tough prison head, you know, the boss of the prison guard, sort of a Charles Durning. I use Charles Durning as a model for that guy, and even though Charles Durning is an older actor who passed away, but he's very vivid in my head, so that allows me to write him. So eh, there you go. But I've written other lines, you know. But you know, it 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 depends, you know, on any given day. <laughs>